In this video, we're going to be looking at how to send SMS messages to our users from our Superbase projects using the HTTP extension. Okay, so this is the follow up to the sending emails from our Superbase instances using the HTTP extension. Uh, now, in this one, we're going to be looking at sending text messages to our users. So we could be sending them codes for their uh, two-factor authentication. If you remember, I built a somewhat functioning two-factor authentication system, which you can go and take a look at. And part of that that we didn't get to was the was this section, the section where we uh, were sending our users the six-digit code. So we did everything within the process, set the code up and everything else we authorized the codes, you had the timers and everything on. The only thing we didn't do was literally send the user the code. And that's what this is going to tell us how to do. So this will link those two videos up. And then also, you know, if you're making a, a booking app, so reminding users of appointments, of anything you may send an SMS for, basically. So there is not a GitHub project for this one. We're on our own. So um, as usual, any code that you see on the screen will be available down below just click the link copy and paste it use it in your projects now again i will start off here because the first thing you need to do is make sure that your HTTP extension is enabled so it needs to be toggled green and if it's not in your enabled extensions you can either scroll down pick it out of the list or search for it in the uh, in the search box at the top and once that's enabled you're good to go all this uh, all this should should work fine so if we go to our editor now this is pretty much the same as the original send an email functionality um, I've built this one myself uh, because there wasn't a project for it so it's like I say it's, it's it's pretty similar there's not that much different to it so this shouldn't take too long especially if you've seen the other video if you haven't seen the other video I recommend you watch it so, but you don't need to, I'll, I'll explain everything as we go. So this is the function that sends the SMS to our user and will connect to the, the API for Cinch. I'm using the Cinch API. Unlike the Superbase Mailer project, we're calling this function directly uh, and we're doing everything within the same function. Um, and we're passing into it the user's UUID, which we're going to use to get their phone number. Basically, we're declaring these variables at the beginning and we are um, selecting out of our private keys, our Cinch API key. Now on the Cinch um, API, there is only one key. There's only the API key, not secret key. So we only need the one. And then we've got the um, the function for creating the private key table we've got there. So basically that will create the private schema for your keys table if you haven't already got one obviously um, and it will set it up and then all you have to do is put your API key within it. So if you copy and paste this into your SQL editor, press run and then what will happen is if you would go to your table editor and go to private schema because that will be created for you if it's not done if it's not there already and there'll be a keys table now again it's got the api keys in so i'm not going to open it but there's just two columns the key and the value and the value being the api key and the key being the variable that we're calling in from into our function so we're calling the API key basically into our API key variable there. We're selecting the phone number from the public users table into the phone number variable. And we're selecting the pin code in our instance. So this is based on our two-factor authentication. So you may not want to do that. You can, I'll come to that in a second when we're building the JSON content. You can put pretty much anything in your message, obviously. Um, but what we're doing, we're selecting our, we've got the verify table, we're selecting the pin code our users, we're selecting our phone number from our users table and we're putting all that into our JSON object. So the from number um, is given to you by your provider. In this case, that's the number since you've given me. Um, but before I get to that, actually, with the JSON build object function we're using, we're building, this is the 
the JSON content, the, the part of the message that's the content. So if you go to the GitHub page for the SQL um, extension, this is how we build our requests. So we've got, we can build uh, the method, which is the HTTP method, which is post, get, etc. We've got the URI, which is the API endpoint, which is we need to include in our request. We've got the headers, which will contain our API keys. We've got the content type, which in our instance is application JSON, and then we've got the content. Now the content is what we're sending as the JSON. So this is what we're building here, JSON content, and we're building the JSON object because that's what the Cinch API wants as its content, it wants us as a JSON object. And then two, the phone number, and obviously that could be multiple phone numbers, hence the use of an array, because we can add many phone, multiple phone numbers into that. And our body is basically when the pin code is not null, your six digit code is, else no code generated, is what's being sent to the user. Um, now in there, you could actually put anything, you could put your appointment is, you could, you know, whatever, whatever you message you want to send to your users via the um by via, via the mss that's what you put in the body so if you think of it as an email it's like your from is the number the two is the email address and the body is your email body so it's just the same um right so our http request we've got the method is post the url is the api endpoint we've got the headers which is the um, API keys, and we're bringing that in, as you can see, as a variable. So we're declaring the variable here, we're selecting it into the variable here, and we're putting it into the headers here as the variable in this just here. And then content type application JSON, and the data content type is the JSON content variable basically so this so we're putting that into the json content variable is going to be the build object function where we created this which is what goes in our um, content here so then in terms of the response we're receiving from the cinch api in this one um, we're just receiving the response code so um, basically, so it will be hopefully a 200 or 201, which is the um, request has been received, or you know anything else, it will be an error or some description. So now what I'm doing, if I go in here to call this function, so that is the user, you, you that is the um, UUID of the user in the table. So I haven't got this set up to call this is doing all being done in super base um this is not connected to a this particular function is not yet connected to the authentication project so hence why i'm doing it like this so but if we go back to this send sms the we're bringing in as you remember the uuid of the of the user where we're going to get their phone number and their pin code so again this will you would pass in as a parameter from from uh from your app, whichever framework you happen to be using, in our instance, Flutterflow would have a custom action, have an RPC call, call the send SMS um, function from there and pass in the UUID of our user. But as we're not doing that, I'll just select it from here. And then what's going to happen is we will get the status code. And there you go. We have got a 201 status code, which means it's a successful request. So we'll go head over now to the Cinch API, have a look at that, look at the codes, look at the the way the request for the API call should be set up, and that should tie these two elements together. So we're on the Cinch dashboard, this is the documentation, in actual fact. Um, so this is the example of how they want the, the request set up. Again, you've got the headers, which is the authorization which in with your application, uh, with your API token in it, which I'll go back again and show you this in the Superbase instance so we can just do the comparison again. 
we've got the content type application JSON and then we've got the message itself as a JSON which is this section and then we've got the API endpoint that's how they want it set up like I say and that's what we have got so if we go to the error codes so we had a 201 the post request was successful and a new resource was created so that's good so what we're doing is making a successful request to the cinch api to send an sms message and then if you get any of these errors you need to look into them and because you've obviously done something wrong unauthorized is if your api token is wrong obviously there'll be a number of reasons why you get forbidden requests or not found is an obvious one that we all know about but if you follow this information that i'm giving you and copy and paste the code and you do want to send text messages it should connect fine now the only obviously caveat to that is that i'm using the cinch api again i have no affiliation whatsoever it's just the one i picked um but there are many many of these available so and they all will be slightly different so you want to make sure that your request is yeah uh, compatible with the way they want to receive it which it should be to be fair um because it's, it's it's pretty straightforward so let's head back to the super base and go into here we have got say the uh, the head the, the method is post so we've got that there we've got the api endpoint which we've seen the headers with our api key so we've got the endpoint the header of the api key and then the message as a json which we're building here into json content and adding it here to our api request so that's it it's, uh, it's pretty straightforward your sms provider will probably want you to validate your numbers you're sending from like they do with email addresses and stuff like that and you may be able to send to certain countries or whatever depending on which one you use so something to look out for um, but as long as you if you copy and paste all this follow the instructions with from your from your api provider it, it should work and then the only thing is just to finish off if we head over to flutterflow so we want our users to be able to put a six digit code in click submit to verify it now all that functionality works as i've already explained this is purely my use case your use cases might be different but just to tidy this up because i did say i would do so in the in the previous video um, this is the code that's being texted to our user and that will be and then when they click submit it verifies if the code is correct or not so it will be um, what will happen is on this particular one this is when they opt in so what happens is when they click submit so we'll have a custom action this one is actually for getting the code but it'll be exactly the same we're passing in the user id and we'll call the send sms send sms function and we're passing in the uuid not the email but other than that same i will put a correct version of this in the code you can copy down below so you can use it in a custom action in your projects and that's it really that's that's how you do it say so it's pretty straightforward it's just as straightforward as the um as the email in fact probably slightly more so because you're only dealing with one api key and we are doing it all in one function so hopefully that was of use if you need to send messages from your super base instances or from your flutterflow apps if it was of use please consider clicking the like and subscribe it is a big help and it's really appreciated and i will speak to you next time